Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Dom and in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how easy it is to make your website look more professional. So I'm gonna be taking you through three different ways of doing this and I'm gonna be demonstrating it using this particular web page right here. And at the end of today's video, I'm also going to briefly cover uh, your choice of font selection. So going inside uh, VS Code right here, I've got this HTML, then I've got the CSS at the top. So I'm gonna assume that you have a similar situation where you've got an existing website or project and you want to add some final touches to make it look more professional. So the first thing to cover here is going to be the line height. So when I say line height, I'm referring to the amount of space between each line of text in a paragraph. Because at the moment, this is using the default line height that is set by the browser. And we can of course modify that value. And at the moment with the default line height, it can be a little bit confronting to read. As the user, I'm seeing all this text which is close together and it can be a little bit unwelcoming to browse this website and look at the text as it is at the moment. So to adjust that line height, I'll go back inside VS Code here, go into the container rule set and I'm just gonna say here line dash height uh, and here you, you, you wanna make this between 1.4 and 1.6. So I'm just gonna do here 1.5. Now, of course, uh, my text is within my container class. So if I go back in the browser here, we can see now the text looks a lot more welcoming to uh, read and it's also more legible in my opinion. So this very small one line change here can make a huge impact on the way your text looks on your website. Now, just be careful to uh, you know, only apply this to your bodies of text and not your individual things like buttons and navigation menus and so on. I mean, maybe they work for navigation menus or your buttons, but for the most part, try and stick to applying this only to your bodies of text, such as paragraphs like this. Now, the second thing to make your website look more professional is going to be your choice of color on the text and the background. So what you'll find here and on most websites is that when using a light background, the text color isn't always exactly black. Okay, so if you were to uh, go to a new tab right now and look at your, uh, you know, some popular websites, if you inspect the body, you might see that the text isn't actually black. It's actually gonna be a dark gray or a darker blue or something like that. So we can also apply this to our text right here. If I go back in VS Code, I'm gonna make this a color of triple three right here. And now, to be honest, my reasoning for doing this is because it takes away from the default look of the web page. If I zoom in now, we can see it's a very dark gray. You may choose to use triple five as the color or triple two for a little bit darker, but the point is going a little bit off black adds a very subtle touch to make your text look better, okay? Now, on a similar note, if you're using a dark themed website, so a dark background, you may also choose to not use exactly black either. Use a triple two or a triple three for dark gray. And then at the same time for the text color, instead of being a default white, add that special touch, make it a very light gray, a triple E or a triple D, something like that. Okay, so that little touch in the text color can definitely, um, in a very subtle way, make it look a lot more professional. Cool, now the third thing to cover here is going to be the spacing and the white space. So this is arguably probably the most important one. And uh, when I refer to white space and spacing, I'm talking about around your elements, okay? Now, when it comes to paragraphs, generally they're quite good, especially if you've got a line height set. But of course you can adjust your margins on the paragraphs 
You can also adjust your spacing inside your button. So in the Enroll Now button, we're gonna be changing that around. And also between things like a navigation bar and the title here. So going back inside VS Code, let's adjust uh, the margin on these paragraphs. So I'll target the uh, any any paragraph inside the container just like this. And I'm gonna say here, a margin of 1.5 EM. Okay, so 1.5 times the current font size. Go back in the browser and we get something like this. Now, of course, the margin applied to the left and right as well as top and bottom. So I'll go back in here and just change that. We can just make it zero for left and right or my mistake. So it's gonna be 1.5 for top and bottom and then zero for left and right. Go back in the browser. And now we have something like this. So a very small adjustment to the margin of your paragraphs here. Let's also take a look at adjusting the padding inside the button. So if I go into the button styling here, I'm using four for top and bottom and six for left and right, but don't be afraid to increase your, uh, your padding, your margin, because increasing that white space make things look a lot less cluttered and a bit more friendly to the user. So if I make this something like a uh, an 8px and a 12px instead, that's gonna be eight top and bottom and 12 left and right to go back in the browser. The button now looks a lot more familiar um, and it looks like it suits a bit more, especially compared to the other websites that are out there right now. Cool. Let's also adjust uh, the padding on the body because at the moment we've got this floating navigation bar. So that's this is gonna be a 50 pixel floating navigation bar. So we of course need to offset that and that is currently being done with a margin. So if I go in the top here, we can see the body has a margin top of 50 pixels, which is the same as the height of navigation just to of course, um, you know, uh, offset that navigation bar. You can of course make this a 100 pixels instead. So double, go back in the browser and you got some space there. Alternatively, if it works for you, um, you can also instead have a padding top and uh, you know of our 50 px, and this is going to uh, not affect or not overlap with the margin of the H1. So if I go back in the browser, we get the exact same effect. So if I was to inspect element here, we can see with that padding, um, sort of the margin is still remains there and the padding is also there on the body. So you can see the green at the top here and then of course, uh, you got the uh, the margin on the H1 right there in the orange. So that's an alternative. But the point here I'm trying to make is definitely don't be afraid to increase those pixel values or those EM or percentage values on your padding and your margin because like I said, white space can definitely go a long way to making your website look a lot more professional. Now, before I go, I want to briefly mention fonts. So uh, a good rule of thumb that I've seen a few times is to have two uh, fonts on your website. So one font would be for things like your titles and your headings or your navigation bars. And the second font is gonna be your main body font. So that's gonna be used for text like this right here. Now, I am currently using the same font for my body and my title, but in your situation, I suggest you experiment with having that secondary font that is just for those special cases, like I said, headings, um, navigation bars, and so on. And also, while you're at it, I'm going to link a video in the top right corner, which is gonna show you the best way to uh, include fonts on your website using uh, a free service called Google Fonts. And it's also going to ensure that your fonts are going to load correctly no matter what the font weight is. And if you're serious about web development, I highly recommend you check out that video because it's got a lot of useful information inside of it. Anyway, that is all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.